It took a few minutes, but we found to find a resting place of Grace Beamer and his wife, Lita. And this is right on the highway coming in. If you go past the flag and polar bear and look for the big pine trees right behind the polar bear, it's right at the end of the row next to the road. A double bronze marker with a flower pot. Final resting place of Oxford legend and radio star in Detroit, Grace Beamer. Mr. Beamer was born in this house in Mount Carmel, Illinois in 1902. The family moved to Vincennes, Indiana, where he went to high school, but left early to join World War I. The story is that he became the youngest U.S. serviceman to gain rank of sergeant during the war, but was injured. His true age was found out, and he was mustered out of the service and returned home. I got home. my trowel today, but I was able to find a wide blade screwdriver, so we edged around the marker as best we can. Vita, 1900 to 1993, and there's Brace, 1902 to 1965. I say when we cleaned it off, we found the green stone and one of the pennies, and we added another penny to it. Cleaned it off to make it easier for you guys to find if you want to come out here and pay your respects to the Lone Ranger. And you'll notice I just saw that too on there. There's a little image of a horse. His great horse, Silver. A lot of stories about Mr. Beamer from around Oxford. And... Here we are today saying hello and letting you see where his final resting place is right here at White Chapel Cemetery in Troy, Michigan. This subdivision back in here was part of the Beamer Farm and this street right here is even still called Beamer Court. There's some of the barn work and stuff right there and there's the actual house where Mr. Beamer lived. Here's a publicity photo that appears to have been taken at the farm. This map shows the original 15-acre parcel that he purchased before he started spreading out and ended up with over 300 acres. His farm, Paint Creek Acres, was a working horse ranch, and he was an accomplished rider and horse expert before beginning his radio career. You know, when you're growing up, you always wonder if all the stories you hear about things that supposedly happened were true. And when I worked just up the road here on the right at the Dominican Sisters Convent, I asked the sisters once if they knew anything about the Lone Ranger living down the road. And they're like, oh yes, that's totally true. We knew him. He used to stop by. And the main memory, though, they said was he was a crazy driver. This Drainer Road was a gravel road back then. And you'd hear him coming. You'd see him just flying up Drainer Road in his big old Cadillac. And I always laughed. I wondered if it was a true story or not. But I think I believe it because I found this image online. Without the modern highways and cars, it would have been a substantial commute from out here in rural Oxford to downtown Detroit back in the 40s and 50s. The Lone Ranger radio broadcasts originated at WXYZ Radio in Detroit, which was housed on the top floor of the Maccabees building. And here a couple years ago, some researchers and uh, historians were able to get a look at the old studio before it was remodeled. And it's pretty cool to see the equipment room, the studios, the stairs leading up to the small space that they use to record. Sergeant Preston of the Yukon, also known as Challenge of the Yukon. The Adventures of the Hornet, the Green Hornet Show, and of course, our beloved Lone Ranger. All recorded right here in Detroit. Mr. Beamer started out in advertising at the radio station, but moved into behind-the-microphone work. He was a natural. He had marketing talent, rugged good looks. He was six foot three and had a deep, booming voice, and he understood marketing. He was the first radio star to really push the marketing angle of his persona. He traveled across Michigan and occasionally across the country doing personal appearances, uh, went as far as Wyoming, California, New York, all promoting his show and merchandising for major corporations. In doing research for this little video, I learned that it was a grueling schedule. 
to be a radio star back then. The travel wasn't easy, you had to tote a bunch of luggage with you, and the actual performances were very physically demanding. It wasn't just a matter of sitting in a chair reading a script. They actually acted out the scene. I recommend the YouTube channel Vintage Radio Researchers to listen to all these great old shows. One story about how he got to roll says that they were at a public appearance on Belle Isle where he wasn't the character. He was actually just there as an assistant. But when the crowd started to surge into a dangerous area where the horses were, he used his deep voice to calm everybody down and restore order. If you're a Metro Detroiter, you no doubt remember Bill Kennedy and his TV shows about movies how he hosted here in Detroit. Well, he was a good friend of Mr. Beamer, and Mr. Beamer's last appearance was on the Bill Kennedy show, where he was a frequent guest. After finishing the show with Mr. Kennedy, he returned home, where he passed away. And this was the last photo of him. He was remembered as the most famous person from Oxford, Michigan. Rest in peace, Mr. Beamer.